Okay, so let's talk about configuring port address translation or NAT overload. Now, um, in previous video on uh, static NAT, configuring static NAT, we gave you a breakdown of the network and how it's set up. We configured static NAT to allow a device on the outside, a PC on the internet, to be able to access the web server inside of our network. Um, and then in the video on dynamic NAT, we talked about using a NAT pool or a pool of addresses to allow a PCs on our network to access servers on the internet. And we talked about the one big issue with this being that you were limited by the number of addresses in the pool. Okay. Um, <clears throat> We have, oh, also remember if you uh, check the description below, you'll find a link to this packet tracer file that you can download and you can follow along. If you want to do everything, then go back through and reference the first two videos and you can go through an entire configuration. Okay, so let's look at port address translation. Now, I'm going to open up my router and there are a couple of things that we're going to need for this. I don't want to go to configure. I want to do show run. So remember, any type of network address translation, we have to identify our inside and our outside interfaces. And that's true regardless of what kind we're doing. Now, if we're doing a NAT overload, we also need to have our access list. There we go. Didn't go down far enough. Access list one, and this list is going to be all the devices that are permitted to use NAT. Now, there are two ways you can do port address translation. And before I dive into this, let me clarify one thing real quick. Port address translation, they call it that because we allow multiple devices to use a single IP address when they're translated to go over the internet. And if we have redundant ports, we keep track of different uh, connections by using their port numbers. And in fact, some cases will not only translate the IP address, we'll also translate the port number if that port number is already in use. So that's what's called port address translation. Port address translation is not the same thing as port forwarding. Port forwarding is something that's done on consumer grade devices and uh, it forwards individual ports. It doesn't do entire ranges the way uh, network address translation does. Um, and port forwarding is used so a consumer grade router will use network address translation to translate your inside IP addresses to the outside IP addresses to go to the uh, internet or to access the internet. It will use port ad or port forwarding when you want to host a server on your internal network. All right, so different things, and they're set up in different ways. Okay, there are a couple of different ways that we can use uh, port address translation. And you'll frequently hear me refer to it as NAT overload, and it's because that's the keyword that we use to configure it. So the first way to do this is by using a pool. And I've already created a NAT pool here, and we did this in our previous video. So it's IP NAT pool. We specified a name, the sort starting address, the ending address, and then the network mask to use for those addresses. And that created the pool that we use. Now, if we're going to do NAT overload or port address translation using a pool, our command is going to be pretty similar to what we did with um, dynamic, trans dynamic uh, NAT using that pool. It's IP NAT inside source, and then we specify a list because I want everybody who's on access list one to be allowed to do it using the pool access and this is and that's just to reference back to the pool that I created up here you can name it whatever you want okay so that marries that access list or the list of devices that are allowed to translate with the pool of addresses that we can use for translation now if I just hit enter at this point that gives me dynamic now which is that one-to-one -one, uh, tran temporary translation now, if I want to allow more than one device to use the same IP address outbound, then I use the keyword overload. And this is why we sometimes refer to it as NAT overload. Now, this is going to work uh, the same way as dynamic NAT. The first device is going to get the first address. The second device is going to get the third address. The fourth device... 
let me try that again. First device gets a first available address. Second one gets a second. Third gets a third. The fourth one can go back and use that first address again, and we'll translate ports as needed. So this is much better. However, this is still not my favorite way to do it. So I'm going to remove that, and I'm going to say no IP NAT inside source list one pool access overload. In fact, my favorite way to do this is not using a pool at all. So I'm going to get rid of the pool. No IP NAT pool access. Now, let me do a show run. Make sure that all of that is gone. I still am going to need my inside and outside uh, interface is identified, and that's still there. I'm still going to need my access list. That's still there. Perfect. But now I'm going to do this without creating a pool. And the way I'm going to do this is it's IP NAT inside source list one. So all that's basically the same that we did before, right? Except that now instead of using a pool, I'm going to use an interface. I-N-T-E-R-F-A-S-E. -E. There we go. I should just do the shortened version of the command. So IP NAT inside source list one interface, and I want to use my outside interface G00, and I want to overload on that. Now, what's going to happen? Let's actually exit out of here. Show IP NAT trans, and we only have our static one available, or our Static one's the only one active. Let's see if we can get to this PC. Then we'll take a look at that translation again, and we'll talk about what's happening. So go to this PC, try to access my web browser, 65.103.154.112. All right, it works. I have access to my outside web server. So my NAT is working perfectly. Now let me go back to my router and we'll do a show IP NAT trans again. And you'll see that we have translated over the same IP address that my router is using as its external address. So do a show IP interface brief and you'll see we're using the IP address for G01 as the address we're translating over. All right, why do I prefer this method? Well, for one, it's less typing because I don't have to create a pool. Um, but the biggest reason is this. If you remember down here, this is my outside addresses and I have available, uh, I've got a slash 29 network being forwarded from my ISP. So I have 209.165.184.0123456.7. and 7 are gone. Zero is a network ID. Uh, 7 is the broadcast. I'm using dot 1 here, dot 2 here, dot 3 is being translated here, which leaves me 4, 5, and 6, three addresses. But if I translate out over this address, I'm not using another address, and those three addresses are still available for me to do something else. Could I create a pool with a size of 1 and do an overload? Yes, actually, I can. And some people will do that. I can create a pool with a, for NAT with a size of exactly one address, and I do an overload the way we showed you earlier in this video. And that will work perfectly as well. Now, another question that I frequently get is, can I use more than one type of NAT at a time? And I want to say, yes, we actually are. Let's go back to our show run, and you'll see right here, we have a static NAT entry, and I have my uh, port address or NAT overload entry. So I'm using both of them at the same time. It's very, very common that we, well, you can have more than one static NAT entry. You can technically have more than one uh, dynamic NAT or NAT overload entries or port address translation entries as well, uh, just if they're going out over different interfaces or different pools. Okay, one more thing that I want to show you. Let's do a show IP NAT trans again here, and you'll see the active translations. Now, on a actual production router, there's going to be a ton of translations. 
and occasionally you will run into problems where a router runs out of memory and it starts misbehaving because it can't write any more translations. I've had this happen once before. Um, the way you resolve that is add more memory to the router. But the way you troubleshoot that and realize that that's the problem is you clear your translation. So the command is clear IP NAT trans or clear IP NAT translation. And then you specify the translation or you hit asterisk and that will clear all of them. And now you'll see the only translations I have left are my static NAT translations. Okay, so that is how to configure port address translation or NAT overload. So between this and the other two videos on doing dynamic NAT and static NAT, hopefully you should have everything you need to successfully configure network address translation on a Cisco router.